For years now, people have been trying to produce an accurate pricing model for cryptocurrencies in a mission to try to predict the future price of this new and exciting asset that is cryptocurrency. And one of the most popular pricing models that really has gained a lot of popularity this year is the stock to flow model. This is of course a model where we measure or we model the price of an asset uh, by looking at its scarcity and how can we value scarcity in an asset such as Bitcoin, such as gold and other precious metals. In this video, I thought we would go deep into what the stock to flow model actually is, how it works, how we calculate it and what it actually says about the scarcity and the value of an asset. Because as I said, this has been gaining popularity now for quite some time. And I want to, first of all, thank and make a shout out to $100 trillion on uh, Twitter. I'll leave his uh, Twitter page in the description, which is, he's really the guy that uh, popularized this specific pricing model for cryptocurrencies. Because previously, uh, the stock to flow model is not a new thing. It has been used for a long time when it comes to evaluating the price of precious metals and really just rare assets in general. So why has it gained so much popularity in the crypto space now in the recent past? Well, I think people for a long time have been searching for a pricing model that, that fits their narrative and that fits the price history and development of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. For a long time, people viewed Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a medium of exchange or a competition to a lot of the payment platforms out there, such as PayPal, Visa, MasterCard. But over the past few years, more and more people have been starting to view cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin as a store of value, a rare, a scarce asset that we should really just huddle. From there, the stock to flow model really fits in because Bitcoin is a scarce asset, it's very hard to create new Bitcoin. It, it takes a lot of work. You need to put down the work in order to produce Bitcoin and you need to prove that you put that, you put that work down through proof of work. The same thing is true for other precious metals, of course, that you need this expenditure before you can produce the actual valuable and scarce asset. And that is, of course, what Bitcoin tried to, tried to model when it was created. Now, what is the stock to flow model? Let's get into the actual topic, all right? And the stock to flow model is pretty simple. It has two variables. It has the stock. And what is the stock? Well, the stock is the supply of Bitcoin or of the asset. So if you take Bitcoin, for example, the stock would be the number of Bitcoin that has been mined. And, uh, you know, just a total of all of the Bitcoins that are basically in circulation. So in Bitcoin, we're looking at a total supply, a total stock of about 17 to 18 million Bitcoins that have been mined. And that depends a little bit since we mine new Bitcoins every single day. So that is stock. That is stock. And now the question is, what is flow? Well, that is maybe quite simple. It is the amount of new Bitcoins that flow into the system every single year, if we're going to measure this on a yearly basis, basis, which really is the standard. So how much stock do we have right now? And how much is flowing into the stock every single year? And at its current rate, the flow of Bitcoin is 700,000 Bitcoins per year. This is of course reduced as the inflation in Bitcoin reduces uh, every halving. But right now it is 700,000 Bitcoin per year or 0, 0 0.7 million Bitcoin per year. So how do we calculate the stock to flow of Bitcoin? Well, just like any other asset, you take the stock, you divide it by the flow. So in this case, we would take 17.5 uh, million Bitcoin and we would divide it by the flow of 0 0.5. And that will give us, as you can see, roughly 25 uh, as the number for Bitcoin, the stock to flow ratio for Bitcoin. And here I've also written them for gold and silver. And gold has a stock to flow ratio of 60, which is a higher number than Bitcoin. And the higher stock to flow ratio you have, the more precious or the more scarce a resource really is. And silver has a stock to flow ratio of 20. But what does this really mean? What does this number really mean? Well, if we look at it from a practical point of view, the stock to flow number is really the years to restock. If we were to run out of gold today, all of the gold that exists on this planet that has been mined, how long would it take us to re-mine all of that gold? It would take us 60 years. And then for Bitcoin, if we were to 
lose all of the Bitcoins that exist in, in the market today, that we all have mined and that are in the system, it will take us 25 years at the current pace to remine that amount of Bitcoin. And that is really the practical impl implication of the stock to flow model. The number of years it takes to restock. That is what the stock to flow model tells us. And that is of course an interesting number for a scarce asset. So and that is why people have been hoarding gold for uh, thousands of years now. Because it is a scarce asset that is hard to find and produce and can't be, uh, can't be faked easily. The same thing is of course true for Bitcoin. So people want to hold on to these assets because it takes such an incredible amount of time to produce new ones. And that is what this model can tell us. So does this mean that this model is a proven way to know that any asset that has a high stock to flow, uh, has a high stock to flow ratio will be valuable, will be expensive, will have a high price? No, it is not, unfortunately, because even though, even though this formula can be used to model the price of Bitcoin and try to, uh, to create a formula for how the Bitcoin price will develop in the future, as I can, uh, I, I've also attached a few uh, websites below where you can check these projections of the Bitcoin price where they have uh, made some regression analysis of the Bitcoin price and produced a formula that connects the stock to flow ratio and how that will change with future... Uh, Havings in Bitcoin and how that connects to the price. It's a very interesting model, but it doesn't it doesn't prove that any asset will have value or be expensive in the future. And I'll I'll give you an example to show you why. If you take the Mona Lisa painting, it's a very very exclusive and scarce painting, right? There's only one, and it's very hard to fake because people know where the original is, and there is only one. It has incredibly incredibly little stock. It's just one in the entire world, but the flow is even lower. The flow of new Mona Lisa's every year is of course zero because by definition you can't produce a new one. There's only one, the original. Another example could be a painting that I made. If I made a painting, it would be worth zero, but it could have, incre it could have incredible, incredible stock to flow ratio numbers if I only produce one every hundred years. It would give me an incredible, incredible stock to flow ratio. That however wouldn't make my painting any valuable, any valuable at all. It would still be worth zero, regardless if it is a very scarce asset and it will take a lot of years to produce it because I can only produce the original. So it's very hard to produce and the stock to flow ratio is, would be about 100, right? So it doesn't mean it's valuable. In order for this model to actually be, um, be worth using, it actually has to be based on an asset that is desirable, that people actually want to own. As soon as the market has come to agreement that an asset is scarce and that it is valuable and that it is a store of value, then this model is a great modeling model of the price. But before that point, it's very hard to establish the price of an asset based on its stock to flow. But if the asset actually is popular, it is valuable and it is scarce, then the stock to flow model can tell us a lot about the asset and especially when we can compare it to other scarce assets and precious metals. It's very valuable to have something where we can compare ratios in between different assets. Just like when we have stocks, we can use the PE ratio to see how, the, uh, how expensive a stock is relative to its earnings. And that is uh, what this is as well, but for scarce assets. It doesn't mean, however, that the model if we make a regression analysis and we fit it to the price, that it actually uh, will be correct in the future, even though it might be. I mean, we never know, right? A model is a model and it can be accurate, but it can also be completely wrong. It's important to keep in mind that these are just models. It's not a predictor, right? Very important. With that being said, I hope you have a firm understanding of what stock to flow is how we can use it in Bitcoin and the actual significance of this number that you'll see. And of course, many people will be wondering as well, how will the halving affect this number? Well, what really happens where we have a block reward halving is that the flow is cut in half. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the actual stock to flow number will double. If we cut the flow from where it is about now, from 700,000 a year to 350,000 a year, that means, well, of course, the stock increases a little bit too, so it's not really exactly double, but it will be approximately 
a double of the stock to flow ratio for Bitcoin. Uh, so we will be up there uh, with gold if, uh, if we actually get past the halving, which I'm sure we will. With that being said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If you have any questions about stock to flow, if you have any questions about the price of Bitcoin, whatever you want to talk about, I want to hear your thoughts. And also make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload or live stream. I live streamed just a few days ago and we had a blast. And the only way you're going to know if you actually is if you actually press that bell button so that you can get notified whenever I go live or announce a live stream, those kinds of things. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.